Hi, I'm Joe Daniel from JoeDanielFootball.com and the Football Coaching Podcast. Today we're going to be looking at really basic cover three coverage, spot drop cover three from a 4-2-5 or a 4-4 defense. And really when you're talking coverage, you know, any kind of six-man box, all the rules would be pretty similar in a 33 stack um, and they'd really be similar in just about anything you do as far as where we're going. We're going to be looking at this here from the 4-2-5 defense uh, where we have our two Corners are free safety, or weak safety, strong safety. If you want to make this into a 4-4 defense, call these guys outside linebackers. It's, it's not any different. It doesn't matter. Okay, we're running a cover three. Um, it's really simplistic. Uh, what we're going to be looking at here is, first of all, dividing the field up. So we're going to have four defensive linemen in a pass situation. They'll be in a pass rush. Okay, We're going to have our underneath zones. Okay, We're going to be working. There's six underneath zones, and I've got a, a video... Um, on the passing zones from the offensive standpoint. They're the same for the defensive standpoint. I'll link to that in the description down below here. But basically, uh, what we've got with our zones, and I'll just go ahead and divide them up here. Uh, we've got our, um, tighten up our hook zones a little bit. Hook. our curl, and our flat zones. Okay, Depending on what you see, you may do things a little bit differently. For us, in general, with what we see in high school football, the hook zone in our area is pretty much uncharted waters, especially uh, after the three steps. So you might get some quick shots with a, with a quick seam or pop pass in that three-step zone, but anything, a lot of the, the you know mesh concepts and crossing routes, we just don't see a lot of it. So what we do is we use our, our mic and our will are going to be our hook curl players. They're gonna to drop to that hash mark area, okay, on a pass read. Now, obviously they're not going right there. They're reading run first, they're run players first, um, but they're gonna be the hook curl players. They're gonna to drop to basically the hash, and we give them landmarks in our cover three, and we say you drop to the hash, um, you're a hash dropper, which means you step up, you repass, um, whatever your key is. And in our case, for our guys, they're keying the guard. So they see set, that high set, uh, high hat pass read out of the guard. They're planting a foot and they're running to the hash 12 yards deep um, and settling up there with eyes on the quarterback. So they're going to be our hook curl players. We do that because we see a lot more action in the flat, but we're going to drop our guys still to an area about halfway between hash and numbers with our safeties. And again, doing the same thing. Now for them, they're keying quarterback. So what they'll see is ball up uh, from the quarterback and they're gonna be taking off to, uh, when they get the pass read, they're gonna be taking off to an area 12 yards deep, halfway between hash and numbers. With our younger guys, I will have them just take off to the top of the numbers right now and get straight to the flat zone and we'll really make this mic so uh, more hook curl. But we're going to kind of give them help and we're also going to cloud the actual curl zone. So we're gonna to drop to an area halfway between hash and numbers initially, and then widen uh, as, as is necessary, as we see uh, the play developing. Um, for example, if we get a shoot route to the flat, then we'd be widening with that. Same thing over here. Okay, step up, repass, hook curl, uh, curl flat, and then widen with it as we go. So we're dropping to the hash, and then an area halfway between hash and numbers, and getting our width from there. And the reason we can do that out here is because um, these routes take a little while to get to the flat for us. And as long as we keep our leverage, we can drive up on those flat throws um, and make a tackle for a short gain if we need to. Now, the back end of the field is going to be divided into deep thirds. Okay, um, And so we've got our middle third and then our deep third tier. Okay? Our corners will be responsible for the deep third there. Um, and this is their job is to stay deeper than the deepest in that zone. Uh, don't let anything get behind you. We're going to key the quarterback uh, and we are going to stay over top of those outside receivers, especially as long as we can. And then our free safety. I am usually going to make the free safety a lot more run aggressive uh, than the corners are, uh, but the free safety will be responsible for that deep third as well. Uh, and he is going to be... Um, responsible for nothing getting behind you in the middle of the field. A couple of things I'll just mention. 
Um, I like to play the weak safety, strong safety, outside leverage. You might notice the weak safety uh, here is outside leverage of this guy. Uh, and there's a couple reasons. It's obvious that you are um, very much in cover three. You are uh, in a run-stopping coverage. It's a simple coverage. It's a run-stopping coverage, and you're vulnerable to four verticals, especially against an alignment where you've got four receivers who are in a position to go vertical. We know that. So if you're going to run a lot of cover three, then you're going to need to have an answer for that. Um, I like playing this weak safety outside leverage where he can bump that vertical release uh, by the by the uh, H-back, carry it to his curl zone, okay, and force him to get a little bit to the inside where now he's more running on that hash mark, giving the free safety a chance to play to it. If he goes outside of a divider, if he goes wider, um, then we might play inside leverage so that he can bump him into the corner zone. But he's going to bump and carry that guy to where we've got a chance to break on it, break the timing off so it's not just routes on air. That's my preference for how to handle that. It's also because we're going to use a more athletic guy at the weak safety than at the strong safety. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can do to handle cover three. One of them is just not, or to handle four verts and cover, cover three. One of them is to disguise and not run it. Um, but if you're going to be running cover three a lot, this is a way to handle it. Um, and so I like to play that outside leverage there. I also like the outside leverage because these are our force players, your flat players in cover three. And in most coverages, your flat players are your force players. Um, these are force flat players, meaning they've got to be there to, to, to handle any outside run game. Uh, and when they played apex, uh, meaning halfway between, uh, like a lot of teams do, and it's kind of more traditional way to play cover three, we found those guys today are just getting hooked all day long by the receivers, held. It's not getting called. I can get upset about it. I can get upset about it not being called. Uh, or I can just make an adjustment to make it better. If they're doing a, if if that's not a threat, if they're not running, you know, wide toss plays, jet sweeps, that kind of stuff, then I'll move them back down inside. It's all game plan. It's all, you know, where do you need that guy? So you don't need to tell me, you know, hey, we're going to run four verticals against this. Of course you are. It's 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 cover three. Of course you're going to run four verticals against it. You're going to run curl flat concepts because you've only got four underneath defenders. It's a great run stopping coverage, and it's a fast, easy install. And if you're in a place where you don't see a ton of run or you're in a uh, youth football league where assume you don't see a ton of pass or youth football league where you don't see much passing. This is really uh, just probably the best way to go with coverage because of the simplicity of it uh, and the fact that it's easy to install and it does, it is a sound coverage. You do have everything covered up. Um, so, if, you know, if you need to stop the pass, you can still run this coverage and stop the pass if you get really good at it. So that's cover three uh, out of a 4-2-5 defense or a 4-4 defense. Uh, I will put a couple links down in the description below here. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And you can check me out in the Football Coaching Podcast and on Twitter at Football Info.